Uh, okay, so uh, the table of contents. So, what exactly are we going to see in this webinar? So, we are going to talk about uh, what exactly is bolted connection, and uh, we will also see uh, the major components in the bolted connection and uh, the types of uh, joints, and along with the different failure modes and how the different kinds of loads that can impart different kinds of stresses in the bolted connection. And after that, we'll also do one problem, a simple one uh, with a ba very basic concept of how to design how many bolts that need to be given on a particular uh, bolted connection. And after that, we also see the different modes of load that can occur on a bolted connection and uh, what are the classifications that needs to be uh, designed and considered when you do the design for that. So all these things we will see. And uh, uh, also I'm going to show you an animation, which uh, I personally did using a uh, finite element model software, ANSYS, and that uh, will show you how the material will react when the load has been applied. So these are all the things that we will see. Please, next slide, please. So, what exactly is a bolt connection? So, as we see in this modern world, we are having a high uh, increased rate in the construction industry, also in the infrastructure industry, where uh, the new types of designs of buildings have been constructed on daily or I can say on day by day basis. But because of this extremely uh, difficult situation of due to COVID. So now the construction is going in a slow pace, but otherwise you can see 10 number of opportunities are there and uh, still it is there. But what exactly have to have this topic with uh, uh, right now is the thing is concrete. So it is one of the uh, basic building material and while structural steel, it is also uh, another type. So both are varying in terms of their uh, stress taking and in terms of uh, their uh, load behavior. So why many people will prefer for structural steel is that they are easily erectable. And uh, the time for uh, completion of the project is as time is one of the major resource in the construction industry. So the quicker your building gets constructed, the more money you can save. So naturally economy comes through in that way. And that is why many people will prefer for structural steel erection structures or buildings or frameworks. Okay, so for connecting these things, we need something. Okay, we cannot just uh, glue it up. <laughs> okay, so for these things, so mainly for connections, there are two or three major connections are there. So the first one is uh, riveted connection, which is now obsolete. The second one is bolted connection. So this is what we are going to see in this webinar. And the third one will be welded. Okay. So if time permits, we can see that later. So here the bolted connection is mainly concentrated. So we are going to connect each and every structural steel member using nuts and bolts and washers so that the proper load transfer from the top to the footing or the basement is conducted and uh, the load is properly distributed to the hard strata below the structure. So this is what the prime objective of using a connection. Okay, next slide, please. So where are these applied? So, uh, anyways, if you are going to learn something in engineering, definitely it should have an application because without application, anything if we learn, it will not stick in our mind. It will just easily fade away. So for that particular purpose, we will also look into where this particular topic will be applied on the field. So mainly it will be used for construction purposes, infrastructure purposes, or like uh, construction of structural framework or like kind of a bridges work or uh, in case of either that bridge can be up a road work or for rail usage or even for uh, specially shaped uh, structures like uh, the... Um, honeycomb uh, nest, yeah, bird nest structure that been used for the Olympic 
okay so you all know what exactly uh, am i meaning okay so likewise for special strip structures or for any kinds of uh, infrastructure projects when preferring to concrete structural steel has more advantage and also it takes less time in erection so that's what the main point is and this is where the bolted connection is also coming in i'll tell you the uh, advantage of these in the coming slides next slide please so as i have told you the three major connections of the structural steel industry so rivet and bolted they both are called as semi rigid connection so first of all uh, you all understand what exactly is rigid right so rigid means stiff once you do it the connection will remain like that okay for so many years so it will not be corrupted it will not uh, uh, get dislocated so likewise okay there are certain reasons for failure of these joints also but if the failure conditions are not there then the structure will remain intact intact so this is what exactly is mean as rigid so what is meant by semi rigid semi rigid means the structure can rotate okay the structure uh, can withstand or it may not be remaining in this rigid connection for longer period okay it may be rigid for some time and after that because of these connection issues it may go into a flexible mode also okay so that's called as semi rigid connection okay uh, before i proceed into this i want uh, you to chat me uh, what is the weakest portion in a structural steel frame please do comment your answers on the chat box okay which i will see and comment later okay so i'll give you uh, 20 seconds time which is the weakest portion in a structural steel building or a framework according to your opinion Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, time's up. Okay, so I hope uh, you have given your answers on the chat box, which I will see it after our webinar section, and I will answer what exactly the answer for this question is. Okay, please go to next slide. So this is exactly. the main component in bolted connection so the basic nut and uh, the bolt will be there so the washer is missing here but uh, that's not an issue because in many cases the washer may or may not be provided based on the loading required condition and also the gripping uh, tendency okay so the bolt it has the head portion so that is where you will uh, tighten it Okay, you will uh, use your tools for tightening it, and you have the shank portion where uh, the soft cylindrical portion will be there, and after that uh, you will have the threaded portion where it will be turned in, okay, into the position, or the nut will roam around, and so that's called the threaded portion. So uh, the length at which the thread is given, so that's called as thread length, and uh, the entire shank length will be called as a grip length, and uh, based on the diameter of the bolt so where this bolt needs to be fixed or what size your bolt hole has to be so that also the provisions are given in our i s standard so based on that we will give and the entire uh, length below the head to the end of the bolt will be called as nominal length okay so these are just nomenclatures just for your uh, knowledge okay so this will not be called under when you do the design purpose so for the design there are certain considerations that we need to have in our mind so we will uh, see according to that next slide please so this is the image shown for rivet okay so uh, rivet connection it was very famous uh, during the uh, mechanization era so uh, you know what the time interval was the earlier 90s okay so uh, 1900s so where the modern industrial era started so at that time nearly all the structural steel uh, works that have been done majorly had rivet connections but the main 
drawback is that the uh, installation is can be very easily done but if you want to do any repairs or any rehabilitation works or if you want to remove a particular member from the joint or from the connection then it will be very tedious and also the bow the rivets may fail very easily okay so uh, that is why the riveted connection is now becoming obsolete it has it had become obsolete so now it is no more so next slide please so now we will see the types of bolt joints okay so majorly the two main joints are there one is lap joint and another is butt joint so this joint is common for even bolted connection also and for welded connection okay so whether you are going to do welding or whether you are going to give the bolt so that's only going to differ but this joining behavior is the same for both these things so one if uh, let's look at about uh, the lap joint so lap joint means you are keeping one steel plate over another plate that's it okay and uh, if you are giving one uh, single bolted then you can see the uh, image uh, lab joint single bolt so two plates are there and uh, through that only one bolt will go that means one row of bolt okay so you are seeing the cross section uh, i mean cut section here so uh, parallelly you can have n number of bolt on that particular line based on the uh, width of your uh, steel plate okay and double bolted also using two rows of bolts right and in case of uh, butt joint so here also what is means butt joint is when two plates are uh, kept parallelly to each other with some gap in between so you are going to place a plate such that it touches both the required connecting plates okay so this is called as a butt joint so uh, here also it is of two types one is single cover and the second one will be double cover so the plate which you are keeping on the top it's called as cover plate okay so based on whether you are providing single cover plate or double cover plate the types are there and also inside that you are having a single bolting or double bolting or numerous bolting okay so these types are just uh, defining in there so i'm just uh, uh, expressing in a very simple way to you okay next slide please now is the question why bolted connection to be preferred and why the riveted connection is becoming obsolete first of all riveted connection the cost of doing the riveted connection is more like double than the bolted connection so we'll see the disadvantages first and the riveted connection will fail even before the bolted connection for the same load applied okay because why because there is no turned portion or there is no threaded length on a particular rivet or the entire rivet length will be a single uh, cylinder like portion which will fail immediately when compared with uh, the uh, threaded bolt section uh, so that is why now the reinforcements that have been used in the construction industry they are all having the tor okay you can you, you would have seen it uh there is a grip length or uh, um how can i say it, there is a threaded portion in the entire reinforcement section running from the uh, starting point to the end of the 12 meter full rod length you would have seen it but you may not have noticed it but this is because it gives much more rigidity to the particular steel member and uh, like wise in the bolt also the threaded portion give much more rigidity and because of that the rivet will fail first okay so naturally the advantage is the simplest erection process so when coming with the erection process we as a designer we need to look on even the erection step also mainly the particular manpower usage who is going to erect so if we consider for the bolted connection even a simple unskilled person or those who have not even studied if we just tell them go and tighten the bolt he will go and do it okay so that's the easiest way okay and simplest erection process so skill labors are not required and faster erection yes and based on this faster erection you can easily dismantle it also by easily disconnecting the members okay so if you want to do some alternations in the structural steel members or the framework you can easily do it okay so that's the main advantage but in rivet connection you cannot do that once you did the rivet 
so <laughs> removing the rivet is a, a big tedious process and if you remove it then the again you need to put another kind of rivet in, inside the action okay so this is tedious next slide please okay types of bolt so now what are the types of bolts we have majorly we have four in the industry so first one is unfinished bolts so unfinished bolts they are having uh, less strength to be frank because they are made of low carbon steel the carbon content is very low they are around uh, 1% carbon be there and uh, it will be used particularly for static loads where once the load is applied it will be there that's it okay, so static means it will not change the respect of time it will remain the constant amount okay so that's it next one will be turned bolts so turned bolts so majorly uh, uh, these are available in the market so if they have the hexagonal sized head on top of their bolt then that's called as a turned bolt and uh, the specialty of the turned bolt is there's no shank portion here the entire length will be threaded one okay. next slide please the next slide will be the third type is ripped bolt so this bolt will look very similar to that of a rivet but only thing is that you can still tighten it up uh, on the semi hemispherical head okay. so uh, there is a tightening member will be there and uh, the threaded portion will continue below the head to the end of the bolt and uh, last but not least and the very famous one that we will use on the structural uh, steel members is this one hsfg or high strength friction grip bolt so the name itself tells you what are the characteristics of these bolt so it's a friction grip so that means when two plates are been connected or been tightened using this kind of hsfg bolt the bolt will make sure that there is sufficient friction in between these poles by the tightening procedure and because of that it will be as a load the bolt will be as a load okay and uh, naturally it be as more strength than the other three models that have been uh, combined okay. next slide please so what is meant by hsfg so here in this webinar i will majorly concentrate on hsfg bolt only because uh, they are now used in the and all the other three are used majorly for the either stack for static load or for lesser loads okay so when tension is applied the bolts are tightened okay so how the bolts are tightening by means of the friction that is been developed between the two connected plates interface okay so that is why in the design of the connections the coefficient of friction will play a major role so based on how much is the coefficient of friction the load carrying capacity of the member or the joint will vary okay next slide please so how the load is going to take so it's a simple process only thing is the friction developed at the interface is dependent to the tension force applied at the bolt or in other way if you know what is the total friction force that is going to act you can vice versa you can calculate the tension force that you need to provide for the particular joint or in other way you can uh, design your number of bolts that you need to provide on a particular joint okay, so this is how the thing f is proportional to t and t is mainly dependent on n mu so n is the number of shear plane okay so before i go into that i'll explain what is exactly is a shear plane don't worry so n is a shear plane and mu is coefficient of friction and t is the tension force developed at the bolt and it should be divided by factor of safety so why the factor of safety is coming in because so definitely uh, whenever we apply on the real world not everything is ideal as per the calculation 
so in order to make sure that the structure withstands the particular load we are going to incorporate the safety factor into uh, the design and that is why is 800 also suggests that we need to have a partial safety factor that needs to be considered so that's the fys and it is 1.2 for all the loads except wind load for wind load it is 1.4 okay so this you can see in is 800 okay next slide please So, what are the bolt sizes available? HSFC bolts are available in very wide range from 5 mm diameter to 30 mm. The number next to it denotes the diameter of the bolt that has been uh, uh, provided. So, there are basically two main grades. So, 8.8 uh, .8 grade and 10.9 grade. So, both these are explained in IS 3757, the specifications for high strength bolts. And in that, uh, the proof load for a particular diameter and for a particular grade has been given. So, what is exactly means proof load? So, proof load is the maximum extent at which the elastic linear elasticity exists. Okay, so what is meant by the linear elastic? elasticity as you can see elasticity means the capability of the object to return to its original position when the load is removed okay even up to the yield point also there is some portion that remains very linear and after that point some portion where the uh, non-linear uh, uh, elasticity exists so the point at which the linear elasticity exists that particular load is called as proof load and up to the proof load only a particular bolt can be given the load. So, so based on this, the IS 3757 uh, gives all the proof load values of different kinds of diameters and for different kinds of grade. There you can refer it. And next slide, please. So, uh, if all these considerations are done, how the load is transferred? So, load is mainly transferred from the bolt to the connected plates through either shearing and bearing. And the next one will be by friction between the plates. So first of all, we need to understand how and where the shear will act. And for that, the animation in the next slide will help you understand. 